<laughs> so, Dr. Hargrove asked me to speak, and, uh, you know, I'd much rather really just have a conversation with you all going on. So, do you want us just to change our seat um, where we're closer? I mean, if everybody's comfortable there, I'm okay. You got to call on them. Students won't. Uh, no. They'll very rarely I mean, chime up. We're all here together. I know. I mean, you know, I have to not chime in sometimes. So I want some people to take my position. Yes. I think hip hop is a, it's a culture that embodies different elements. Like, you know, you have your dance, you have your language, you have, uh, of course, some music. Mm -hmm. To me, I just feel like it's just a, a, just a huge culture that just embodies everything that is based on um, the people of that culture. So you, you, you're in it as a, as a cultural thing. Okay, that's good. Yes, I wanted to know what the dictionary, what, what, what it, what, how much it included, how much it left out was the only... Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll tell you in a second, because it, it, it gave some sort of cultural reference, but I think sometimes we still forget that hip-hop is still just a musical art form, that because of its greatness and because of the things that it created, it became a culture, you know, as jazz and other things did. But it was because it was so great and because it had so many elements to it that, I, in my personal opinion, I feel like it then became described as culture, which is a good, uh, speaks volumes to what it can do. Um, you know, it speaks volumes to what it does do, you know. And I think just like rock and roll became a culture because of what, it was created out of culture, but because of what it itself created, it then became a culture and bred many families based on certain mindsets things like that. So, you know, uh, the dictionary said that it was a style of pop music of the U.S. Black and Hispanic origin featuring rap with an electronic background. Mm. Now, this was just my little iPad, I mean, my, my Mac dictionary, my Apple dictionary, uh, my app. And I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting um, because here we are saying that race is a social construct. But it clearly identifies two races as the origin of this movement. So then to me, it makes it clear why people don't feel included or don't feel like they can comment on it, don't feel like they can be a part of it, and feel like it has to be a black thing or a people of color thing. But when I came into this class, I also, and you know, it was. 
within my mind and within how shape hip hop shapes my mind. I also attribute it to a black thing or people of color thing. Now, of course, other people will come in and create this music, but it was still very clear to me and uh, and, and some of our friends that I know we discussed it of where it or, you know originated that. But if we're in a class or well, clearly saying that race is a social construct, then that means we also have to break the social construct of hip hop, and we also have to break anything that is deemed a cultural thing. We have to break into that and say, well, since we already know that race is a social construct, we have to start to use social in our understanding of what is attributed to race. For example, if hip hop is a social thing, then we now need to go in and say, okay, well, whose race is said to only make this thing? Mm -hmm. And once we can identify whose race is only said to make this thing, then we need to take that race out. But we have to be comfortable enough to do that. And I think that's the idea of actually figuring out what is something so you can know how to go into it and figure out what parts don't belong and what do belong. You want to say something? Uh, it's just the yeah, hip, hip hop is seen as a, a racialized culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the idea is that's a part of the trick. I mean, that's what I've got from this class. I've got from this class that if you, now this is me being bold, and you know, I'm not an anthropologist, so I don't have the rules. I don't have to follow certain rules of not offending certain people. When I do that, I can suspend you if I want to. <laughs> uh, this is the beauty of being a musician. I can say whatever I want to say. Say, hey, I'm creative, right? I can be creative. <laughs> um, but really, it's what we all have. I think it's the beauty of being fearless. And I think that if, if the idea is that race doesn't exist, then what exists? Then people's cultures exist. So how do we respect and learn about a culture without constantly seeing the race that's associated with it. Because to me, that's what hip-hop has become now. Yes? You know, on your definition, wherever you got, whatever your source was, mm -hmm. um, I keyed in on the word pop, and pop was yeah. pop. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those segue words where it, it, it kind of gives you that that room to kind of move, mm -hmm. or to either, either to move or to get in. Mm -hmm. And um, as being a woman, okay, as pop has um, evolved to me, mm -hmm. um, and has been to me, it was a popular music, mm -hmm. that's the, the, of course that's the shortened version, but um, when, in growing up, and watching hip hop evolve, I associated pop with being um, white music, mm -hmm. it was like the rock and roll, okay, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to even hear that word pop used within the, the, the dictionary context. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much just to indicate that it's a popular mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. brand or, mm -hmm. an, or a welcomed brand or a mm -hmm. type, but more to say, hey, it's like you might find some semblance of what it is that you're used to hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. It's another trick, just like another trick. Hispanic yeah. exactly. and black and there is a trick. That these words are being used to keep you limited yes. or allow those people who limited are in that room exactly. feel a part of it. And, and they can always go back and forth with that mm -hmm. and say, well, we meant it as an inclusive or we meant it as an exclusive. Mm -hmm. And that's that slippery, that's how mm -hmm. race is used in a way that, you know, is always that ambiguity of, <laughs> oh, well, we meant... Hispanics were part of it. We didn't mean it originated with them. Well, you said it did. Yes, exactly. So, you know. So the whole time, you're thinking you're learning about some, something. You're thinking you're getting more information about it, but you're still being kept out. So, you know, when Dr. Howard asked me to speak today, I said, well, how can I speak to including you all more than what you've now been informed on in a more detailed way? Because sometimes we can get lost in the details. You get all the details of something, and you still... You may not understand it, but you still feel very much outside of it because now you just know how it works, but you don't know how you work within it. And so I want to ask the question, how does it relate? How does hip-hop relate to anthropology and race? And, and Dr. Harbour was speaking about this before I came up here. So there's textual information that you would just give, that you kind of hash over in your mind. But feeling-wise, based on what you've seen and feel thus far, far, because there's tons of it, but based on what you see and feel, how does it relate to you? How can you make anthropology and race relate with hip hop enough to explain it to someone if you had to? Well, like one of the big um, aspects of anthropology is the whole like emic and 
knit, you know, you have to have the inside perspective and the outside perspective. Yeah. And so it's like using the two of them together gives you the whole perspective. So it's the same way with, you know, it's, if it's a part of the culture that you have a bit of a stake in, you have to be able to look at it from inside, mm -hmm. but also be able to look at it from outside and remove yourself from it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, you know, same with yeah. grades. You have to be able to remove yourself from it and look at it from both inside and outside. Okay. How do you, how do you feel, what do you understand as the inside of hip hop, and then what do you understand as the outside for you, personally? For me, personally, like, my outside view has been built for me by, you know, like, I never really listened to hip hop until pretty much this year, that I, you know, started to learn about it, and learn that it's not just, you know, what I heard people listening to in high school that was mm -hmm. like the mainstream stuff. Mm -hmm. And that I just didn't like, so I just kind of wrote off hip hop. Mm -hmm. But then now that I'm like looking at it, especially like from within side of it, I see it as more of a community mm -hmm. and as a culture. Whereas, mm -hmm. And then from the outside, I look at it as more of a, you know, objective and you actually look at the interactions of people and more of a kind of mapping it type mm -hmm. way. But when you're inside of it, you think of it in more of like, a, oh, it's just, Family, friends, you know, relationships, and that's important because if it, if, if race is a, is a social thing, you know what I understand about being social is that you choose your socials, your social group. Mm -hmm. It's always a choice, mm -hmm. and it will always be a choice depending upon how you choose to carry yourself. Even if you feel like, oh, I have no friends or I have no social life, you still do because that's based on you. It's based on how you choose kind of social person you choose to be. If you leave yourself out of things, you get left out. If you include yourself in the things too. I'm a bold person, so I'm I was one of those kids that always invited myself places. My mom would say, Don't you know, don't invite yourself places. In my mind I said, Well how am I gonna get there? You know? But the barriers have been set up that yes. that a lot of white students don't feel like they can enter those realms and I think I hope they see now that if you do the right thing yeah. and you present yourself as yeah. someone who's willing to learn yeah, so people, like people are going to be open. Get open minded exactly. back to you, and it just. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't do the right thing, you can still go inside, but you won't ever really be inside. That's exactly right. And I think that. Well, the, the right thing, I think, is to simply be open. I, mean, I think sometimes we. I like how you said, you know, I think both of y'all said are open. I'm not sure who said it, but the idea is that sometimes we make things too detailed and too difficult so that we don't ever feel like we're included. And that's something that is being perpetuated by the outside, but it's a very internal thing. Yeah. It's a very internal thing to, to set up walls and barriers against your own self and then to look for those walls and barriers in your environment. You'll find them every time. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I've been making hip hop for over 10 years, but I just recently, I've only been recording for three years. So people only knew, no, no excuse me, it'll be 13 years now. So. 13 of, those three, 13 of those years, only three were spent admitting to it. Now, for me, that was the right thing, because I was going to be someone who was a producer, not just a consumer. I had to make sure that I was of what I am doing. There are a lot of people who don't do that and who hop right into it, and they do that because they just want to feel included. The same people who create it are the same as the people who enjoy it. Mm -hmm. There are people who hop right into hip hop and start listening and they feel like they're ready for a Grammy. I mean, excuse me, they're ready to acknowledge who deserves a Grammy. Just like there are people who hop right into it and start making it and feel like they're ready for a Grammy. Then there are people who have appreciated music their entire life. And so when they hear hip hop, they go for, an appre they go for the appreciation of it. And they begin to listen to it mm -hmm. and they begin to educate themselves on it before they feel like they know anything about it. And to be treated just like that, it's, it's an art form. You know, and so it's just like, I mean, for me, everything is art. And then that's how I approach being humble and being appreciative of things that I do not understand. Because I recognize that there is someone who's created this thing who can tell me everything about how it works. I feel like culture is art, too. I feel like anthropology is art, too. I feel like education is art as well. This is yep. why I say, hey, let's have a conversation. This is something that we're doing together. If we don't do it together, then there's always a, a, a barrier. You know, I was one of those kids that went to art gallery and touched the art. I like art. I touch. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how does hip hop and anthropology or race connect? Because to me, that was like the hardest. When I like when we started talking about hip hop, I couldn't <coughs> really find like the connection. And
and I'm still having a little bit of a struggle with that because I'm, I'm like, <coughs> how does that really go hand in hand? Like, what is, like, what she trying to What's say? What's the point? Yeah. Well, for me, the way I understand it is, and this is leading to uh, the next part of what I want to do, who makes hip hop? Who makes it? As far as, like, the music or the mm -hmm. decisions or the, the music itself. Who makes it? <laughs> I feel like the, the artists, they make it, but the decisions on how to make it. Well, let's not, this is the thing about, let's not go, let's not get too detailed before we at least acknowledge what's going on. Because I'm a hip-hop artist, and my decisions still come from me. And this is why I, I spent so much time doing it before I went out into um, a big form and said, this is what I do. Because I always make the decisions. But that's based on my confidence. And this is why also I, I led into earlier that generally, and just for the sake of discussion, there's two kinds of people that make hip hop, there's two kinds of people that listen. There are people who run in and feel like they know everything and they're ready, and then the people who observe and study and then create. It's the same kind of thing with the listeners. Observe and study and then create, because you're going to create the kind of music you're going to buy, so you're still a creator. And then there's people who run in and say, I know everything, I listen to this Tupac song, and I saw this Lil' Kim video uh, you know, the other day, and I listen to Nicki Minaj. Who do you want to listen to? You know, I preferably would rather go with the person who's doing some sort of observation. So if you're doing some sort of observation about hip hop, if that's if that's the kind of listener you want to be, then you need to think about who makes hip hop. If you're observing it, if you're not observing it, then whatever somebody says hip hop is, you're going to take that and you're going to believe in it, or you're going to be so tight onto the definition that you're going to have a hard time even defining anything that is hip hop because you're so locked in to what you've been told, not what you've observed. So it's your now job to become an observer. You have to go out and now, you've, you've acted <coughs> you've acted in the role of someone who's listening by doing the things that someone who's listening would do. Now you actually need to become an observer. And that's one of the things I learned in school. You know, I had a professor here uh, that was teaching about, um, it was a class called like Hindu thought, or something very abstract as well, that how could you possibly break this down, right? I want to think that he said it is not my job to break it down. Like, it's not my job to break down hip hop. It's your job to break it down. I'm only giving you some tools, and that's it. You have to do everything else. And if you don't do anything else, then that's on you. You'll never understand. And you can parade around and act as if just because you had a class and talked about hip hop, or because you know what CD to buy, that somehow means you have some sort of understanding. But no, it doesn't. It just means that you're acting, you're still acting. And you continually act in the role of someone who's listening. But until you actually become an observer, then, in, in my opinion, as someone who studied this thing, you can't ever say you understand. So you have to now decide for yourself, Do you are you content with the information you've got in this class? Or do you want a basic understanding of hip-hop or a basic idea? If you leave here and you've never been introduced to hip-hop before this moment, then you simply have a basic idea. And now it's your job to go and say, okay, well, I'm going to observe. Now that I have this tool, I'm going to begin my observation. If you don't, there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, I love rock and roll, but it's something that's new for me. You know, I went out and did things so that I could observe my, my, my love of it. I went and out and got Led Zeppelin and got Bob Dylan and got things that I couldn't hear on the radio. And I decided that I was going to observe it. And I'm still not done. So you won't catch me saying I know everything about rock and roll. Or you may not catch me going to a whole bunch of rock and roll shows just because I want to be cool. What I mean by that is it takes work. It takes work, and I think that's the anthropology side of it. That's how it relates. You have to do the study of it. That's how it relates. Well, you have to see how anthropology is a white elite discipline that created an idea that when we say hip-hop and we think blackness, that's why. Because, unfortunately, we created this idea of, of human difference that's with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And you have to constantly unlearn these ideas that are tropes, but yet anthropology created it. So, I've, you know, I use anthropology to undo and unpack things that they packed up and said, done, yeah. because I feel like that's your, intellectually, that's the responsible thing to do, is always show how, you know, we, we help to create the idea of, of white and other and developed country and underdeveloped and first and third world, and popular. or popular Hispanic, culture. Black. Yeah, exactly. And, and so you can never be comfortable with those things when you know that none of them really exist. So that, and, that, and, that's, and that's a good, again,
again, unpacking and packing. So the anthropology relates to hip hop as it relates to, would relate to any culture. The Mayans, if you were studying the Mayans, fill in the blank. Take hip hop out and put in the Mayans. You know, if you were studying, I don't know, the Gullah people, take hip hop out and put in the Gullah. So it, it, you, you do a process with it, just like anything else. And, and like she said, there's been such a uh, box of whiteness. Everything's in it, mostly. So we have to go into this box and stop realizing, I mean, at some point we have to let go of going into this box. Because I, I think folks just haven't let go of that. Nobody wants to go into the box unless it's a box to match. Like, unless somebody can argue about race, they don't really want to talk about it. That's why you, I think you find a lot of people just arguing about it, because those are generally people who want to talk about it. But sometimes I think people feel like unless they are ready to argue, they can't discuss it. When in reality, address it, get rid of it, because if it doesn't exist, what are we still staring at the boogeyman for if he's not there? So get rid of it, and then go and look at what's actually in the box. It's almost like, you know, they say, uh, I have a friend of mine who says, just touch your nose. I said, what does that mean? He said, just do it. Whenever you need to do something, just touch your nose. It's just that simple. But we don't want to get over the process. We want to say we're doing the process our whole lives, because at least that makes us feel like we're doing something. But to be stuck on the process is an effort to get to the outcome. So, you know, that's the idea. What, what is that? To answer, to, in answer to your question about the anthropology of race and, and, and hip hop, I want to take from my, from my personal experience and watching it, again, evolve and watching it come up from this nothingness. And something I've been doing from within the class is labeling, okay? my empirical experience, mm -hmm. my, you know, my lived experience, it's mm -hmm. like what I know as, mm -hmm. as, as my true history. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the broader things is that I didn't realize that it was so um, inclusive. Because it's one of those, it, again, it's, it's just like poverty, the way that poverty is, is portrayed. It's, um, hip hop was so boxed up mm -hmm. to, it's, that black music, that, you know, it's urban. Like just, just those urban, you know, those yeah. urban, the whole bit. And one of my first, I guess, enlightenments was um, I lived in Kennesaw, Georgia, which is predominantly white, mm -hmm. and um, living out in a very um, country setting. Rural. Rural country setting, okay. And um, raising my window and hearing hip hop music blaring and thinking that there were other black people that were there in the neighborhood. This was in 1991. Yeah. Okay. Now whether I stayed now whether I, I stayed in that mindset or not, and in coming to this, in, in, in coming to this this class, this setting, um, and especially over the years, I've seen other, you know, I've seen a, a, a big involvement, a, a good involvement, a more inclusive involvement. Um, whereas I never imagined that there would really be this many non-black, non-African-American, other, okay, anything other than participants, mm -hmm. okay, and not just in the business of it, not just in who owns it, okay, but the participants and the people that are attending the concerts, mm -hmm. the ones that are, um, I mean, it's like in, in Wu-Tang video, it's like you can look out there in the sea and it's like just to see that many, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just to see that many, you know, yeah. other than. So I mean, it's like, you know, that part has been rather um, enlightening to me. And I, I keep trying to say, it's like, gosh, did I really miss something in like in and the past 30 something years? Yeah. yeah. As yeah. opposed to, we're taught mostly in, you know, America, it's, you know, it's an illusionary place. Right. We're taught mostly just to assume the position and act. Right. And that's what, and I think that's what gets act. people into yeah. hip hop. That's, it, race had no role in me getting interested in hip hop, yeah. it was not being put in a box. I've always been this person that if anything's mainstream, I don't like it. And then anthropology just really accelerated that for me. Because I was like, my God, the Academy's created norm for everything. We've studied things to death. We've analyzed, you know, analyzed everything to where nothing can be just something that people do because they want to and because they're breaking a mold. And so you know, and but then when you get into it, there's a whole history you've never been privy to. And that's the interesting part. It's funny how the things we participate in have taught us how to overstudy, but we don't overstudy as individual in our lives, human beings. Right. So that's 
the trick too. Yeah. If we're made to overstudy at work, at school, in relationships, or God, you know, then we're not going to then internally do that. So we keep running into these same walls all the time, these walls that teach us to study, but we're not taught to study ourselves. And so what, what, what I'm saying is that if you really want to have any sort of real concern about hip hop, which is fine if you don't, because you don't have to do anything, but if you really want to, then the idea that you begin to actually study, and then whatever furrows your brow now won't at some point. But if it's now making you go, how does it relate? Then you ask the questions. But then when you cannot ask the questions anymore, you simply find out. And I think that that is the idea of not becoming so overconsumed with the academy making you overstudy. You need to overstudy in your own being, in yourself, and you'll start to realize that you haven't been observing yourself. You've simply been observing what everybody home told you to look at. Right. And that's the idea of going, how does anthropology and race and hip-hop relate? How doesn't it relate? It, it, to, it, to even be in itself, those words in themselves include each other. Yeah. And then when you put them together, of course they relate. Did I know that? No, I didn't know that when I first came in here. But I came in open, and I came in ready to do study, which is why I've been here 99%. I think I'm in fourth class. That's right. And it, it's for a reason, because I said if I'm going to do it, I'm going to make sure I'm understanding what I'm doing. Now, as I've come out of this, if I want to assume that I know anything about anthropology, it's going to come from me studying further. It's not going to come from me saying, oh, I wasn't this anthropology of race class, Dr. Harborough. I know about anthropology. No. You know, and, but we're very comfortable with that idea, just like we're very comfortable with going to the grocery store and buying fruits and vegetables, so we think we know something about eating healthy. No. Farmers do, that raise those fruits and vegetables. Yep. So if you want to know anything about eating healthy, it's not just calling yourself, you know, a healthy person or I'm vegan. I didn't, I'm really now starting to learn what vegan means because I'm starting to actually get involved with the fruits and vegetables. I'm actually getting involved with them. Not just going, oh, I go to the grocery store and I put these things in my car and I eat them and I feel good. It's a process. I'm starting to garden. It's a process. So it's the same thing you have to do with your mind and our music. Every time you listen to music from this point forward, you can ask yourself, what is hip-hop? Who makes hip-hop? Is this considered hip-hop? Would this be? And according to the definition, and if we work on definitions here, then style of pop music of U.S. Black and Hispanic origin featuring rap with electronic background. That means any time you hear, now this is based on the definition, not on what we're saying, but any time you hear rap, which is so many things, over some sort of electronic background, even if it's composed music, there's still some sort of electricity working with it. Mm -hmm. Then it's hip hop. And whether or not I or you want to agree with that, if you want to function within the culture, then that would be the understanding. Because hip hop has become so broad now that I have to expand my definition as a means to not become some sort of arrogant artist. When I hear someone that I don't like, I can easily be like, oh, that's not hip hop. And I used to do those things. I see people with shirts that say hip hop minus lies equals rap. That's cool. Some people want to say that. Those are hip hop purists. And to, to, to a, in my hip-hop purist outfit, I agree with them. But in my human being outfit, no, I do not agree with them. Because the idea is that anything that excludes people, no matter whether or not you're excluded because you're a preacher or you're excluded because, because you're a murderer, you're excluded. So if I am, if my objective is to not exclude anyone from anything, if my objective is to eradicate the idea of race, then I have to get rid of other things that have limited the, the hip-hop as well, or any medium that I seek to understand, which is in my opinion, which leads me into, well, I'm going to show you some things that, you know, I wouldn't have called hip hop some time ago. But now that I have been in this class, I look at it and I go, well, if I have to remove race from this thing, then I have to remove poverty. I have to remove ignorance. I have to remove some of these other things that I felt keep people from making hip hop. I felt like ignorant people shouldn't be making hip hop. It's not hip hop if you're ignorant and you're talking about nothing. But I have to get over that too. Because truly, if I'm getting rid of the idea that it has any walls, then let's really do that then. And let's really get to a place where we no longer um, have all these things that can constrain something if it's already been created and now it exists. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me, we're going to start with something uh, quite 
That's right. Oh, yeah. Turn it up on that Energy world. in Alaska. He gave millions of tap. All you ladies pop your pussy like this. Shake your body, don't stop, don't miss. All you ladies pop your pussy like this. Shake your body, don't stop, don't miss. Just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it now. Lick it good. Suck this pussy just like you okay, should. I'm going back home. Check y'all in further. That's hip hop. Mm-hmm. <laughs>